we have a really, really amazing uh, lineup of filmmakers today. Uh, I, I have the, uh, the good fortune to say that I've worked with each and every one of you in some capacity, so uh, full disclosure, and I'm, I'm super proud of that. Uh, and of course, uh, we have just here uh, to my left, uh, Carla Forte, uh, who is an award-winning filmmaker, uh, from, originally from Venezuela. Right? See? Yes. Ahora in Miami. Uh, she's done some amazing, amazing features, shorts, uh, including uh, one that I worked on, Urban Stories, uh, and this amazing film, Conejo, and, and so many other great projects uh, that you've worked on uh, here in our community. So welcome, Carla. Thank you, Jose Luis. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And uh, we have uh, Carlos V. Gutierrez. Uh, he is an Emmy-winning filmmaker. Uh, he just finished production on his second feature, uh, Stay Safe. Uh, previously, uh, you can see his film, which I think is still out on VOD, right? Locked in with Mina Suvari, uh, which is a great film as well, so definitely watch that. Uh, and so welcome. Welcome back, Carlos. Thank you, Jill. Absolutely. Happy to be back. Yes. And there's another guy that I'm, I'm kind of getting to know recently, a little better. Uh, <laughs> but yes, a, a very talented, uh, award-winning filmmaker uh, who is also from the community, much like Joe Menendez, a Hialeah boy, uh, born and raised here in the 305, uh, who has now has his, his award-winning feature film, Marcus, uh, was just released just before our conference on July 15th by Gravitas, also available on VOD platforms. And all, full disclosure, I am a producer, so I'm asking each and every one of you to rent it right now. Whip out your cell phones. I want to see a rent or a purchase if you want to go to the after party. See, that? that's called leverage in the business. <laughs> but no, it's a really great film, uh, and I hope you guys do watch it. It was made here in the 305. So welcome, J.R. Poli. All right. Uh, so, Michael Hiron, again, welcome. You are our newly inducted uh, Miami-Dade County Film and Entertainment Commissioner. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role in the film office. Well, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for playing that. And uh, I, I want to take uh, a point of privilege, uh, that I, since I have the mic, to recognize this lady here next to me who set the stage for Miami-Dade County in terms of building the infrastructure for film. So, thank you, Sandy, for that. Appreciate it. Yes. My, my predecessor who's doing amazing work in Broward County and we, we plan uh, to work together cohesively, the two counties, to make us a, a great destination for film and television production. So a little bit about me, I'm the film commissioner for Miami-Dade County and um, I was born and raised in the city of Miami. I am uh, a Miami boy through and through. My parents are Cuban. Uh, so I have a very big love for this community. I've seen uh, this community grow from all the different facets, all the different um, nations that come and visit us here and live here. And we, we really are very uniquely positioned with uh, a melting pot of so many nations, which makes us a, a sort of a flavor to the world. So um, I started in this business when I was a, or when I was actually going back, when I was a child, um, I was very much, um, and on a personal level, going through a very difficult childhood. And one of the things that led me to the entertainment business and a love for this industry was uh, escaping the reality of what was happening to me as a kid, and that was this business. Because what we do is tell stories, and what we do is, uh, is you know, entertain ourselves in, 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 in whether it's music or movies, we tell stories. And that was definitely a way to kind of um, escape what was happening to me. And I will tell you that I have been in love ever since then. So uh, very grateful to be here uh, today. You know, I've worked for Disney uh, in the entertainment uh, part of Disney. I've worked at Universal Records. I was a former talent agent, so I represented models and actors in the TV and film industry. Um, I am also a former elected official. I represented a northern part of this county. Um, I've worked in two of uh, our biggest cities here in the city of Miami and in the city of Doral at the executive level, working very closely with the mayors and uh, commissioners to accomplish uh, our goals, but always with a love of the industry and, and always having that in my heart. So 
now in this new role as a film commissioner, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of putting Miami Dade County and building upon our infrastructure that, that Sandy has created and really working with you guys because ultimately as a film commission, what we want to do is make sure that we work to support your projects, that we streamline those, that we incentivize as best as we can, and that we work from a government standpoint to support the industry. So um, we're actually in the city of Coral Gables one of our municipalities and this building, the Biltmore Hotel, I will tell you that is very film friendly. We have a lot of projects that have filmed in this building. It's a beautiful building. It has a history over 100 years. Mm. And I'll also tell you that most recently, notably, we had a project that filmed here, which is called Father of the Bride, which aired on HBO Max. And it did pretty well. You know, it was, uh, it wrote record for HBO Max. It didn't film, the whole film wasn't done here, but I can tell you that um, it showcased uh, this beautiful city and this beautiful building. So um, very thankful to the mayor. Uh, some of you may have seen her when she was here on the night of the reception. We welcomed her. It's important uh, for film commissions, and you know, Sandy will agree with me, when we have leadership that supports us, that really helps in making sure that we can accomplish the goals in order to support the industry from a government standpoint. So. Um, I welcome all of you once again to Miami-Dade County, and I look forward to supporting all of you. I will give my information to all of you, and, and you can contact my office so we can support and continue uh, to build Miami-Dade County as a top global destination. I'm sorry if I took too long. <laughs> no, you, you did, I was just going to cut you off. You did it perfectly. You timed it perfectly. Marco, that was great. Thank you. And uh, let's go to uh, the lovely lady on your right, Sandy Leiterman, who uh, is now with our, our neighbors to the north in Broward County. Thank you, JL. Well, you know, everybody says, I moved north. I'm t it's 20 miles, really, <laughs> seriously. Um, and a lot of people ask me why I chose to leave Miami-Dade County to, to move to uh, Broward. Well, I actually am a resident of Broward and have been, but I was born and raised in Miami, so I'm a Miami native. I'm Florida native, um, but I've been up there for 30 years. But the reason I, I actually left there was to take what I had, you know, with the foundation that was built here and start moving it up so that we can regionally be stronger. And, um, you know, Greater Fort Lauderdale uh, hadn't had their, you know, their, their, uh, their uh, you know, they're an unpolished gem that really haven't had themselves in the spotlight. And when we talk about um, uh, support, I can tell you that that was a great reason also. The support in um, Broward is is unbelievable. Um, you know, I have nine commissioners that are all on board. I have a county administrator. I mean, everybody just says yes, which is, that's what you want to hear. Um, and, but they believe in this industry, and they wanted to make it a cornerstone of economic development. Um, so um, I'm building a foundation there, and I'm building a foundation starting with the departments in the county and creating processes that weren't there before, also creating processes and working with each one of the 31 municipalities to make them film friendly. So I'm building that start, you know, it's not like I'm just saying, hey, everybody come on in here first. It's building the foundation first and then, you know, m making sure that we can accommodate production in a very economical and very, you know, film friendly way. So that's, that's happening and it's in process. So I, I'm very proud to say that we have probably 28 of the 31 municipalities that are saying, please come to our backyard. That's pretty amazing. Our office actually does permit for all the municipalities. So that's another um, great point of one-stop permitting. You don't have to go all around. Oh, sorry, Marco, because I was there. Um, <laughs> but um, the other part is that we have a, we just launched June 7th, a very, um, I want to say, a, a aggressive film incentive program for independent filmmakers. And in October, we're going to be announcing a very large um, uh, f deep pocket fund that will be aimed at, um, I'm going to say, high-impact television. So I'm so happy that even though, unfortunately, you, you left home, you're still very close by. And I think it's a great idea, this idea of regionalizing and collaborating between our, uh, our counties. Yes. And I know that between you and Marco, you're going to do some great things to support our filmmakers. So thank you both for that. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, speaking of which, let's get to our Mavericks. Uh, I want to start with Carla. Uh, hola, Carla. 
Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, and again, you know, we go way back. Uh, we worked on Historia de la Urbe, Urban Stories, together uh, many moons ago. Um, and uh, also The Holders, which was a great documentary. Uh, but since then, you've been doing some amazing projects as well. So, so Carla, as I mentioned, uh, you're from Venezuela, but you've been in our community a long time now. So talk a little bit about your experience about being a local filmmaker here in Miami. Yes, sure. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Carla Forte, and, well, I'm here from a long time ago. Um, I have been in my career here in Miami, Florida, and also... Um, internationally too. Um, and uh, working in Miami um, has been hard, <laughs> let me mm. tell you. Uh, I feel um, we have a few um, opportunities and I need, we, we need more as a, as a local filmmaker. I feel mm. that we need more. As independent filmmaker, you have to work with the resource that you get. So if you get few, you have to work with that. I'm the kind of uh, filmmaker that I uh, think that you have to do your work, uh, and I'm not. I'm. I, I'm really. I don't. I'm not the kind of person that I have to wait for millions of dollars to make, you know, your movie. So it's hard. It's a. It's a hard path, but uh, at the same time, I feel honored and and I feel uh, grateful to to make more than three feature films, um, and with a very uh, nice. Uh, um, Internationally, um, ¿cómo se dice? Um, Dime, dilo en español. Sí, como gastado en, en muchos, eh, we, we, uh, con festivales internacionales. Yeah, many international film festivals. International film, fe yeah, film festival. Right, na right now, my new uh, feature film, Manny and Mickey, that is a low budget feature film, is next to two, 200 million dollars uh, next to this movie. So when you got this kind of opportunity and things and in the Chester Film Festival, you feel as an independent filmmaker that you can make it and you can keep going for, for your dream, for what you want. Mm. And in my perspective, in my side, what I want is just tell story, is just make my movies no matter what. So I always say, uh, I always say and share with the young filmmakers that, you know, you can do your work and you have to keep going and making and that's it <laughs> mm -hmm. well said Carla thank you thank for that you. Carlos V. Gutierrez my good friend how are you all right so Carlos tell us a little bit obviously you are uh, mm. from the area tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and and being a local filmmaker although you know you do you do work nationally and internationally mm. as well uh, not only on these really amazing commercials that you work on uh, and branded projects, but also, you know, obviously the, the feature uh, locked in. Yeah, thank you everybody for, first of all, attending here, because this is really, for me, a big showing of, you know, the independent community that we have here. Um, my dream and Sandy and Marco who have become very friends with and really, really enjoy both of their companies, and they are true blue what they're saying, and they really believe in this community. But, you know, I, I've lived in a few cities uh, and came back because I believe in this city. And um, certainly, you know, with the amount of commercials I've done, both locally, nationally, but also doing these films, it's, it's, you know, it's been a thing to try and understand why we can't bring more projects down here. Uh, Locked In, unfortunately, was shot in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I fought tooth and nail to not do it there, but lost that battle. And as JL said earlier, I just did a second film called Stay Safe and we shot that in Savannah. And uh, you know, just it's par for the course right now. And if you came to the last panel, it's basically about packaging. It's, you know, mm -hmm. where the actors want to be, uh, where the money's coming from. But you know, I believe in this community. I really do. And uh, even talking to both of these uh, lovely film commissioners, I, they know I have projects that I want to bring here. And it's just a convincing, you know, it's no different uh, than convincing an actor to do your film than convincing an investor that it's a worthwhile project. It's also convincing them to bring projects here. And the more we can do it, the better. Um, yeah. You know, well JL, uh, Jose Luis has been incredibly instrumental uh, in helping in a lot of these things. <laughs> and he doesn't like to hear that. I, I know how to search YouTube. I'll take that. Yeah, that's anyway. true. <laughs> Good. And... Um, you know, I even did a commercial where we did both counties. Uh, it was for Bacardi, 
And it was back in October, November, and uh, we had to use both counties because the amount of resources, about a 10-day shoot, so almost mm. like a feature. It was like a little feature. It yeah. was like a mini feature. And uh, it was a big campaign for Bacardi, and we had to traverse both counties. And it was, I remember uh, talking to JL about this and going, this is exactly how it should work. Right. And again, it's on a smaller scale uh, than a big studio film or big TV series, but you know, it works. It works when it works. And we have everything you need here, you know? And it's really amazing. And, and honestly, I can't get South Florida out of my storytelling. Every time I'm like, no, I'm just gonna write something that has nothing to do, and it just sneaks its way back in there. Right. Absolutely. And, and I think all of you and many of you here probably have the same thing, that you have a passion for this area and for what you want. Hey, baby. <laughs> oh, sorry. So yeah, my lovely wife Sylvia is here, oh, hey. by the way. Those are the, the little Martinez's. That's uh, the future Florida Mavericks. Future filmmakers, future Mavericks. There's guy. Oh, he's waving. He's a star. <laughs> he's auditioning for you guys. He's auditioning. He's got the part. That's Gabriel. Yeah, no, it's, um, you know, I think everything that's been going on here is, is really great, dude. And thank honestly, you. it's been a great two days of just listening to all these panels and everything. Oh, thank you, Carlos. Well yeah. said and, and appreciated. So uh, an amazing project. Uh, there's Layla and Sophia, by the way. That's the whole three-pack there. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, and she is a filmmaker. She actually has a, a project to pitch as well. I won't give it away, but it's, it's a really cool uh, robot movie uh, that she has. She's, we've been developing that for about a year, so we may talk about that afterwards. Uh, so, everyone, I am very excited now uh, to introduce all of these amazing panelists, uh, but this one is, is fresh uh, on the scene. Uh, this is, of course, the award-winning uh, Marcus. All so, right, Mr. Poli. Talk to us a little bit about yourself. Well, as a I can't watch that trailer. It's so crazy because uh, obviously distributors got their own trailer cut, <laughs> right. and I'm like, oh, this is awful. I saw it the first time, and I'm like, that was about a year ago, and I was like, I will never watch this trailer again. And I have not, so as you see, I was facing the other direction because I'm like, I'm not going to watch this trailer. It's the same thing with the poster. They, they, they take your creativity. And listen, at the end of the day, I'm like, you, you guys have been doing this for like three decades. I, I just started, so go ahead. You, you know what you're doing. But I am J.R. Poli. I'm from Hialeah, Florida. Woo! Uh, born and raised there. Uh, went to Hialeah High with Jose. Went to North Hialeah Elementary with, or JL, sorry. Um, and I've known him since I was, what, you say six, I don't know, five, five years old, six years old, so I've known him forever, and, um... Six and a half. Okay. Well, he's the one that kind of put me into film, because I was, I don't even know what I was studying in college, and he, he came home one day with a camera, and I was like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm in film school, and I was like, there's a film school? I didn't even know they did that. I'm like, you just, you just don't make movies? And I was, so I went right to the college, and I said, you guys have a film school? And he's like, yep, it's over there, and I... Switched my major and got into film, and ever since I've been sucked into what we all call a dream, I guess, you know, and uh, I, I blame him every day for this, you know, I go home and I'm like, this bastard got me <laughs> into the worst profession ever, uh, but yeah. You could have been selling Guadapo right I'm now on 49th you, Street, but I'm telling you. Well, here you are making films. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm, I, yeah, I'm a filmmaker, uh, you know, and it's, it is a calling, uh, it's one of those things that I, you know, people do it and, you know, you either love it, you hate it, probably both, because I, I think everybody who does this and, and succeeds at this hates it just as much as they love it. But at the end of the day, that love, even if, even if it's only 50%, is enough to get you to keep going, you know? Right. No, you're right. Yeah. And, and so, but talk a little bit more about Marcus, because Marcus was shot. Uh, in uh, primarily in Miami-Dade County, right. uh, in the city of Hialeah, multiple locations, a lot of support from the community to get mm -hmm. that film made. Uh, you know, you saw some clips of, of the beautiful downtown, uh, uh, now I'm forgetting the name of the location. Alfred DuPont. Ah, ese mismo. Alfred DuPont building. Uh, there were some residences in the city of Miami as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit, I think, out in Doral, maybe. Uh, so talk about just the whole process of being yeah. able to actually put this project together and shoot it here in, in the county. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it started off as a short film in 2017. I wrote it. Uh, we shot it. It did a festival run uh, in 2018. It did really well. We won a ton of festivals, and people were always like, can you make this a feature? And I was like, nope. And I was, <laughs> I was pitching, another, pitching another movie idea, and then that movie idea, we had a, a decent budget on the table, and, you know, the door slammed on me, and I was like, 
why am I waiting for this amount of money where I can make that for nothing? You know, mm. I can make it as long as I keep true to the short, which was made for nothing. I can probably produce this pretty, uh, pretty cheaply. Uh, and then because I've been in the business here for 22 years, you know, working in reality shows and commercials, and I've done a lot of, you know, half rate, you know, days for people, you know, as favors, because you know how it is, you know, there's no union really. And so they, they come in here and go, I need a DP. I'm going to pay you a hundred bucks. And you're like, and then you're like, what else do I got going on that day? Nothing. All right. I guess I'll take the hundred bucks. So those people that called me, I would call them, you know, 10 years later and I said, Hey, remember that time I did that job for a hundred bucks? Yeah. I'm going to need a crane from you now. <laughs> and they were coming out with a crane. And here's your crane for the day. And, you know, it's just like Hylia Hospital. We shot at Hylia Hospital. We got the entire second floor for free for a week. Mm. The entire second floor, we were able to staff it, you know, put our own crew, I mean, uh, extras and actors. And, again, that was just based on contacts and asking for a favor, which, yeah. uh, you know, the independent world's all about that. It's just favors. you got to really pull those favors. Yeah. So, in other words, you know, you know don't, don't frown on that free job or that half-rate, you know, because one day you're going to come back and go and take notes yeah. Write them all down. I, I, I work for that guy for free this many days. <laughs> uh, he's going to work for me. I do it for everyone. Trust me. I mean, Carlos knows this. We've, we've been at this for, for years, and we will, you know, I, you call me, you need my, fa- my help, I'll be there all day, and we'll work together, and I'll make your film, and expect a call back. <laughs> I'll be calling you soon. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a whole Godfather speech we're not going to get into, but one day, <laughs> and that day may never come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JR, that's great. Yeah, so obviously, you know, yeah, th- this is a film that was made uh, sort of at the micro budget level with a lot yeah. of heart and love, but, you know, still, it, it is branding for the city and for the county and for what we're capable of producing down here, like you said, right. you know, because the favors we're pulling from are real professionals in the industry right. that know how to work at the highest level. But sometimes, like you said, when it's something that's locally made by a filmmaker that's contributed so much to the community, you can put these things together mm-hmm. uh, and make them happen regardless. And so I think that's a, a, a great case study to talk about now sort of you know the future of the industry and where you guys either see it going or where you would like to see it going carla what what and i know you talked a little bit about that um you about needing more support so what support specifically you know would you like to see out of our community to make more of your projects here uh well sure um i think um as an independent filmmaker in miami florida we need more more um, opportunities like grants. In Europe, they work in a way that uh, a filmmaker can get, you know, support. Uh, because the, the, the the problem, uh, I think, and it's not a problem, it's a way that, you know, in America, we see movies or cinema, is, it is a business here, but it's also art in a different way, too. So mm. in Europe, you can also see Right. You know, uh, our cinema that yeah. is supported. Right. Very important uh, directors that are supported for their movies. Mm. So I feel that we need that incentive here too. Mm. It's not just about money. It's, it's also about good ideas. It's mm. also about good scripts. It's also about people that work very hard with very good ideas mm. with the project. So uh, I don't know. Um, I feel like we have opened a little more our minds and um, let other kind of projects, you know, get yeah. life, a life. Yeah. And that's it, yeah. No, very well said. Thank it's, you. Yeah, and I'm glad that you mentioned that because, you know, we have a lot of our European partners here, you know, obviously in Spain and the UK, which have some amazing models uh, for not only supporting the big mega productions, but also the, uh, particularly nurturing and growing their local independent filmmaking community as well. So that's the... Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And one more thing, I think uh, art cinema, you know, we, do, we, we, we have to keep our cinema going too. Yeah. You know, it's not just business. Yeah. Uh, we, have to, we have to show people to community about different things that are also important. It's not just about selling, it's not about commercial. You know, we have, we have to create a balance. And that's my worry about here in this country. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. There is an art behind it and a passion for sure. Sandy, you were going to say something? So I was going to say that, um, and of course now I'm going to be plugging <laughs> Broward County, um, <laughs> but I'll tell you that we actually, the Cultural Affairs Department has grants up front mm. for filmmakers. 
Right. So that is a um, pretty cool thing that um, the d director of uh, cultural affairs has put into place. So um, I, I want to plug that. I also want to say that, y you know, um, um, not nothing to my side here, not, but in, in Broward, there is, it makes it a little simpler because we don't charge for, like, uh, there's no fees for parks. There, is, there are no fees for, you know, to park county, even county facilities. Sometimes you might need to have a facility person there, but it is much less expensive. So that kind of, that helps when you're doing, when you're putting together, a, you know, an independent film. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in there. And yeah. you can go for it now. Sure. So I think, you know, for anybody that is in this industry, it's so incredibly important that you build relationships with the film commissions in your district or in your in your cities, in your areas, because ultimately, from the position of, of, of the government standpoint, we can try to facilitate, as Sandy was mentioning, when it comes to grants. And by the way, uh, Miami-Dade also has, has, uh, has support. Yeah. Yes. Through our cultural, we also have grants as well. <laughs> And, um, and incentive programs that support uh, local filmmakers at various levels, depending on what the production is spending locally. But it's so important that you build that relationship because we're the ones that are that is we're the ones that are able to hold your hand while you're in town to facilitate. And for a county like Miami-Dade County, we have 34 cities. That's that means 34 mayors, 34. Uh, nuances and 34 different ways of, of, of uh, codes that each city may have. So our office will work to facilitate that. And that takes away so much of the headache. Um, but when it comes to funding and indies, I think it's always at the forefront for, for, for commissions to make sure that we can support as best that we can. And we, we want to see you succeed. We want you to succeed. So that's ultimately the bottom line. Yeah. 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 Just to add to that is that um, a lot of filmmakers that are just starting out are afraid of film of the film commissions. They think, oh, mm -hmm. they're just going to be there to you know to um, to, to police us, right. and that is farthest from the truth. We're here to try to help you make your you know your project. That is our goal is to help you make your project mm. at whatever means necessary, and that's the truth. No, that's the good good note. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Carlos, jump in there. What what would you like to see? from the community in order to, to get things going for you here? You know, for me, I mean, I, I grew up doing commercials here first, short films, and then I left to New York. Mm -hmm. And what I've realized, and now I'm kind of seeing it from a bird's eye, is that the apprentice system here is broken, right? So we've lost mm -hmm. a lot of great crew people mm -hmm. that I grew up, you know, watching them. Mm. And a lot of these people have left. And I think it's up to us now, and I've been doing this also through various organizations locally that are building mentoring systems, and to develop the next group of not just, remember, we're talking directors here, but there's like everybody else. Mm. There's the writers, there's the producers, the costume designers, the production craft designers, service. okay, craft service, all these right. people. Yeah. And if they don't have uh, a way to learn from, they're just, I mean, you know. There's, there's no real balance, you know, because yeah. we can bring a film, but if there's no crew to shoot the film or right. a giant TV show. So, you know, even getting situations like veterans coming back, uh, trying to get them into the film industry, mm. you know, things like that, and also just developing the youth here. You know, that's really, I think we have to focus on that too. Yeah, no, you know? definitely, like you said. Money's, money's everywhere. Sure. You just got to go find it. Right. Okay. <laughs> But if, uh, and the actors, we all know where the actors are. They're basically in L.A. or New York. But, <laughs> you know, the, the crew is, is a big thing. And we have to develop more and more crew here. And we got, I mean, listen, we just had two giant TV shows shooting here. And, and that's, that's a really strong advocate for this community, that they were able to sustain two massive TV shows at the same time. No, you're right. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But we need more. But you need more, and like, yeah, and, and like I said, while you're training that next generation, right. so you can keep the pipeline of content. Get them going. on those sets. Why are those people not being allowed on those sets? Like, right. Why, you know? So allowing some of those restrictions to be taken off. Uh, Carlos, to your point. So um, one thing that I think that probably Marco was doing, I know that we're doing in Broward, is we're actually talking to the carpenters, the accountants, everybody, basically every you know faction that um, belong you know in in our industry about cross training them. 
Um, we're actually going to have, I think Chris is up there, we're going to be doing a, um, a, 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 um, a Zoom talking to all the unions about how to develop more labor here. So it's part, it's definitely part of what's right. in our, you know, what we're trying to do. Um, and, you know, if, again, whatever means possible, and mentorship is really important, and we're trying to build that up with what we're doing up 20 miles up north. <laughs> So uh, from a really, really independent world, I'm, I, I, what I like to see in the community here is the, the stopping the negativity. Mm. I'm going to explain that because I've been here for two days and this and yesterday, actually, I mentioned this to a few people on three different occasions. Nobody knows who I am and you didn't know who I was until I sat here. So I'm sitting in the hallway or I'm standing trying to get on an elevator. And I heard three different conversations that were standing right next to me where a filmmaker or an actor is putting down a local filmmaker or an actor that's mm. here. And that's got to stop, you know, right. because it's like, this is what, the, the, what's, what are we competing? Are we all competing here? Like, there's no competition. You're not taking money from me. I'm not taking money from you. So, well, you know, if, if you have a problem with this guy and the way he shoots something, then get on his set and help him shoot it. You know, right. stop with this, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that I really would like, I mean, this isn't LA, you know, this isn't everyone's trying to fight for the same or fight for some money or it's 100% the same game. So... Yeah, that, that collaboration that we need to kind of put into concrete here, you know, it's just, I hate it. I, I, I went to lunch and immediately I was like, I just got to, oh, this guy was bashing this guy's look of this other, so another guy, and it's like, oh my God, why are we doing this? It sucks. Yeah. Basta con chisme. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that support system has to exist not only at the institutional level, uh, at the cultural level. Uh, but like you said, at, at a filmmaker to filmmaker level um, and, and to, like you said, try to keep it positive and again, being able to have those relationships where you can ask favors from, mm -hmm. from your fellow colleagues uh, and have that be its own support system as well. Uh, so I think, no, it's all great advice. Uh, I want to uh, turn it over to our audience here to see if they have any questions for the Mavericks. Uh, Peter, I think it's you. Right. Isn't that the reality? So what I want to say to that is, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think uh, as I travel Miami-Dade County and meet with a lot of the industry stakeholders and, and speak to people uh, across the country in LA and New York, uh, you know, from the highest of levels to the indie to commercials, music video folks, Everybody always says, Marco, incentives, 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 incentives. It is the, it is, I hear that every day. I don't know if you hear that every day, but I hear it every day. So at our level, at the county level, we can go as far as we can go with the budget that we have. And we, we do have an incentive program that for every million, we can, we can, a uh, hundred thousand and so, and so on. Um, and we are at the county level lobbying Tallahassee and working with uh, the, both the house you know, we, we, we no longer have those incentives. But we are, from a county perspective, lobbying as best as we can to continue that. And I know that, you know, Broward is doing, you know, the same, same thing. Yeah, and we still on, you know, with, uh, with I, I'm vice president of Film Florida, we still actually will go to Tallahassee this year, even though we know that we will not get incentive this year. We will go just to still be in the conversation um, that's part of what you know we do actually to, uh, together. And I don't know if you know Film Florida, but it's the nonprofit organization from you know all across the state from industry stakeholders. And we we actually have a lobbyist, and we go to Tallahassee, and we work with other lobbyists like from NBC Universal, and you know we could keep going um, together to try to change the narrative in Tallahassee. Um, and it has been you know it, it's it's an uphill battle. Um, we see some light maybe coming up in maybe two years, but that it, it, it's there's a lot. It's a it's a longer conversation like that than right here. It's very political. Yeah. And, and I'll say this: we we've been we've been after this for a long time. It's been what uh, it, it's it's. 
2012. 20, so we, but 10 years, yeah. And I'll say, I'll say this: every year, I think we get a little closer to trying to to get to where we want to be. So mm -hmm. it, it it it. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm going to say, but you're right. No, yeah. no you, you're right. We do get closer. The thing is, is that actually, if you were to you know to do a straw poll on the legisl the, the legislators. They, it would overwhelmingly win. It is leadership. There are, there are five people, actually. It is, the, it is the governor, it's the speaker of the house, it's the Senate president, and the two that are coming up, so the speaker designate and the, um, and the Senate president designate. Those are the ones who make the decisions of what gets on the floor, and that's, those five are what stops us. But yes, uh, thank you uh, for the question. Uh, Peter, any other questions over here? Yes. Uh, this is a question. Uh, I've been coming to this event. Uh, there have been 12, and I've come to about 10 of them. And this is one of the best ones. Thank you. I mention it only because uh, I, I aged out being a participant in this type of event. But I still think that uh, you do a great job, especially you. Huh. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Appreciated. Oh, okay. Cool. No, thank you. <laughs> I, I will just chime in here that, in fact, Marco and I were having this conversation in the hallway about that, yes, there is, you know, we all are film lovers. We love films. We have filmmakers here as well. And it's, we'd love to bring as many films here as possible, but clearly there's still a thirst for big TV series to come here. Yeah. And they don't care about the incentive situation. Right. Yes, it depends on the, yes. And, it, and to a actually, degree. And that actually hurts us in Tallahassee. Right. I, I'm, I'm just saying I that, know. it does, well, because they do come I mean, but We want them. Here, yeah. Here's my point, yeah. that the shift mentally has to be like, F it, if we don't have it, we're just gonna do it anyway. Well, that's what because we, that's what the reality is, right. the TV people have, given up already. They don't care that Florida doesn't have it. Right. And the, like I mentioned earlier, there's two huge TV shows shooting at the same time, kind of crossover. Yeah. And right. they were able to do it, and we were able to do it as a crew, as a community. And so I think just from a, a, a film standpoint, we also have to make a push hmm. to bring these films here, you know, yeah. to make them happen. I love what Carla said, actually, yeah. when she said, you know, make it at any cost. And I think, yeah. meaning sure. that... When you talk, JR was talking about people, you know, not working together. We should be working. The filmmakers should be working together collectively to try to get these projects made. Thank you. To try to get these projects made because if you work together, that that content creating community working together is going to raise up not, not only just what what you're shooting, but it also raises up, you know, the representation here when you go into a film festival and you're representing, you know, uh, Miami Dade County or Broward County. It's important. Right. Yeah, and I want to say, uh, don't get me wrong about um, my statement. Uh, it's just I want to um, be, um, I don't know, a voice for the independent filmmakers here. And I really uh, thank you, Jose Luis, because you are a, a, a big, big, uh, you know, piece in this community. And also the. Um, uh, the, the Instituciones Culturales, uh, cultural institution that has been supporting my work here. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I want to say that we need a little bit more support. Mm. And please uh, put our cinema in some space, experimental film in some place, because we, we, we need, we need to, to have some space for for that kind of films. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Carla. Thank you for those kind of words as well. And, and obviously, it is a team effort as well. And obviously, the MMFM is, is so many folks uh, that come together every year as a committee. Uh, obviously, our, our hosts and Patty Arias, my, uh, my partner in all this and co-founder that does such a great job, you know, uh, at least once a year, you know, with the goal of MMFM to bring everybody together. Uh, you know, regardless of, you know, where you're from, if you're in film, if you're in TV, but if you want to make something in this community, I think it's having these sort of events, bringing everybody together and just having these conversations uh, that, that helps us move the ball forward. 
you know, uh, that in addition to, you know, me bringing an eight millimeter camera home and showing it to JR so you can figure out what a film school is and that. <laughs> so it's an education process as well. Uh, but he's done quite well with himself and so have all of you. Uh, so with that said, I want to thank everyone on this distinguished panel uh, for being our mavericks and our champions of industry here and art. Because it is art and commerce <laughs> that makes it all happen. Uh, so, muchas gracias.